ladies and gentlemen, please silence your phones and hush your babies. The show is about to start. Welcome, everyone, to, I almost said the Nemo & Co. halftime show, but that is not what's happening just yet. We've got a couple more weeks until General Conference, but I expect you all to be there. Uh, we are talking today about the building of a temple in Birmingham, and whether it'll actually happen or not, because it is not guaranteed to happen. Despite some sort of presumptive language the church is using, and despite the fact that they've already had meetings with the council before they put their planning application in, it is not guaranteed. Uh, and I think that's definitely worth uh, pointing out. But to talk to me, a man who is likely to wear red trousers and oppose the building of many things in his own backyard, uh, here we have <laughs> Peter Bleakley. Um, hello, Peter. How are you? Hello. Now, I'm very pro-build at the moment because we want okay. to extend our house. So any, <laughs> anyone can put anything anywhere. I'm fine with it. <laughs> it's so all good. Have, for, for the American audience, <laughs> we're going to really be getting digging into the sort of the cultural mindset of Brits when it comes to building things. Nimbyism, not in my mm. backyardism, is alive and well here. Um, very, very alive and well. Um, and often the law backs up this idea of preserving um, sort of landscapes and preserving areas. You know, even if your house isn't listed, mm. it can be in a preservation area, which means you've still got to ask someone permission before you do anything to it. Um, it's yeah, it's it's wild, isn't it? And and Jeremy it's complicated. Clarkson, <laughs> uh, for those who know who Jeremy Clarkson is, one of the former hosts of Top Gear, uh, he wrote a column uh, about people in red trousers. That's what he calls them, people that oppose planning permission that he tries to get for his farm he talks about them as, as people in red trousers so um the nimbies in red trousers I was wondering what that was about yes yeah um <laughs> so that's that's with that rambling intro out of the way that's what we're going to be talking about with the uh birmingham temple um so let's Ooh. get to it let's um let's crack on and the first thing i want to do actually is put something straight so the guardian uh, reported on the fact that the temple is going to be built because what the church put out renders before they'd even applied for planning permission. They put renders out there saying, this is what our new temple will look like. And that feels a little bit about jumping the gun. Uh, it's a bit so presumptuous, it's, like it half of their temples. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. This is, this is what the guardian has. It's to not say. Utah guys. It isn't. <laughs> it's not Wyoming either. If, if the Brits, if you take nothing away from this, if the Brits get really on one, if the locals decide they don't want this temple, it'll make Cody Wyoming look like a walk in the park, honestly. Um, Brits, when they don't want something being built, <laughs> they're, they're, they're not a happy bunch. It ain't so happening. The, and the so. Guardian aren't helping with that idea because they've put here, the large white edifice will feature a 314-foot spire and an imposing entrance arch. Planning permission is yet to be granted, but the church hopes construction will begin this year and take up to three years to complete. Um, that is not a 313 foot spire, a uh, 14 foot spire. <laughs> really needs to, you know, make that clear. Um, I was chatting to someone earlier and they said that would make it the 10th largest building, in, uh, tallest building in the West Midlands. Um, the West Midlands, which has Birmingham in it with its skyscrapers. Uh, and... 314 foot is actually the level of Sutton Coalfield where this is going to be above sea level. So that's how tall yeah. um, <laughs> they think this fire is going to be. It's actually going to be about 100 and, 120 feet yeah. or something like that. I'll find the exact Did measurement. Polly Toynbee Peter, write that? <laughs> Pardon? Um, Polly Toynbee... Polly Toynbee, famous Guardian columnist, who I, mm -hmm. I don't think she was ever right about anything ever, in my oh, slightly right-wing right -wing opinion. <laughs> <laughs> the Guardian is famous for inaccuracies and spelling mistakes. Right. Um, the, so the Private Eye magazine calls it the Growny ad, because it's just <laughs> always getting things wrong. <laughs> so Excellent. they strike again so they, this is they, actually a co this is this is a cherished cultural phenomenon in britain yeah. um the guardian national guardian newspaper getting something totally wrong <laughs> so, so there you are they've, they it's have, actually quite cute they've struck again <laughs> there's insider um, giggles yeah <laughs> what do you think it, of the design nemo i i think i, oh, I, I, don't I quite know what like to it think to us. i think yeah 
I think when you look at it there, it looks lovely, but I'm aware of what the site mm. looks like in my head. And I, I do wonder yeah, how yeah. it's going to fit in with the local area. Yeah. Um, oh, it I won't. I think that's... <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It's on a tree line. I, I love the Englishness. Of, yeah. It's, I love the Englishness. I think they're doing really good at channeling um, sort of typical English parish church. So that's cool. You know, they well, are yeah. adapting these sort of box temples. It has a pitched local roof stuff. for a start because the London temple yeah. has a flat roof, which you can tell yeah. Americans designed it, not yeah. realizing that Britain is as yeah. wet as, you know, anything. <laughs> Because yeah. water sits there. They have continuous yeah. mould problems in the temple in London because water just yeah. sits on this flat roof. So at least they've got a pitched roof, mm. which is appropriate. So that's nice. Mm. Um, yeah. We so did yeah, like we a... did sort of conclude it. There was something about it, and we finally put mm. our finger on it in one of our Brit Venture chats that it looks like a mausoleum, <laughs> which, mm. which may or may not be appropriate. Is that um, the white stone that, that gives it that mausoleum it's... vibe? Yeah, yes. Yeah. And the slightly classical sort of look to things. If yeah. they'd if they'd made it kind of out of gnarly sandstone, it would look cute. It would work. Mm -hmm. Few few Yeah, or just too yeah, a local obviously. a local stone um <laughs> of some kind. Yeah. But yeah. you know, uh, mm. they want it to stand anyway, out and, and it they could be worse it in the documents. <clears throat> but yeah, it could be a lot worse. Mm. Um so credit to it's those. It's not a Mac temple, so I'm grateful. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Uh, so, and did you say Brits had designed it? That it was a yeah, British it was a British architecture, uh, architecture firm. Mm. Um, Try to remember what they're called now. Uh, someone will tell me in the chat. I'm sure if if someone knows, but yes, they um, that it's a British design firm based up in Manchester. I think that did it. So it's got some of that local sympathy yeah. in that sense. Um, but the client is still the mega corporation that is the Mormon Church. Um, <laughs> One thing I have noticed is there appears to be a bit of a problem with the planning document that they submitted. So they submitted a, a sort of a statement on, you know, how they feel that the temple meets planning regulations already. Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to make their case that they've done everything right. And then obviously planning officers will look at it. Mm. The public will be consulted. Local residents will be consulted. They'll get to come mm. and chat about it. And um, mm. that's that's kind of what how the procedure will go. And then it will be changed. But they're trying to kind of put forward how they've done things. So, for example, we have something in the UK called a tree preservation order, which means that some trees are either old enough or mm -hmm. special enough that you're yeah. not allowed to cut them down. So they have to work yeah. around whether there's tree preservation orders. So several trees on the site are included in an order um, in TPO 363, which was dated 2nd of March 1982. So in the 2nd of March 1982, someone from a local government came along and went, those trees can't be cut down. And that's it. You just can't. Yeah. You can't get rid of them. So they've got to work around yeah. that sort of stuff. Um, but I've mm. noticed a, a bit of a problem in this document, which is in two point one point four. It says typical Sunday services take place in the meeting house as well as funerals and receptions. Small gatherings, including church councils and youth groups, and community uses such as English classes, musical programs, blood donations, and vaccination clinics, also take place in the meeting house. A family history service centre is also located within the meeting house. It is a building which allows the congregation and community to gather, worship and build stronger relationships. So um, to be clear, at the moment, the temple's being built on a site where there's currently a meeting house already and that meeting house will remain. Um, BDP is the firm. Thank you very much to Imogen in the chat there. Yes, it is. BDP is the architecture firm. Um, so that's to be clear, there is a meeting house there that is still going to be operating and we'll get to the sort of site plans in a minute. But it says the rest of the site comprises and maintain lawns and landscaping and circa 70 vehicle parking spaces, of which five are accessible spaces. The site's western, southern, eastern boundaries are all well screened by mature trees. I've been there. The trees are massive. Um, and the northern boundary is relatively open. Yes, it backs onto houses. People's gardens back up on the northern boundary of the of the site. <laughs> um, but why this is important, and then I'll get your, your thoughts in on this, Peter, is because they've proposed that the temple will operate on Tuesdays to Saturdays. And it says temples are closed on Sundays for members to attend their local meeting houses. As such, there will be no clashes on this site between temple services occurring on Tuesday to Thursdays and the meeting house Sunday service. Okay, fair enough. Um, but then 3.5.9 at the bottom, for the avoidance of any doubt, the existent services within the meeting house, Sunday services, family history centre, funerals, receptions, etc., will all continue as they do currently. The hours of the meeting house will remain as existing. 
And then later on, they again say the temple will operate from Tuesday to Saturdays. The temple will not be open on Sundays or Mondays. Services within the existing meeting house will continue on Sundays. Thus, there will be no service clashes between the two buildings. Now, that is important because that's what they've used to justify the parking situation. And boy, oh boy, are they not going to like the parking situation, the locals? Because anything that means the locals uh, might have their residential roads parked on by people visiting the temple will be a problem mm. and peter if you just read 6.7.30 uh you are can... massively overestimating oh, my eyesight at this scale i'll read that yeah okay. please sorry so, so <laughs> the standard for building somewhere like this they're saying one space per 10 square meters the temple and meeting house would generate a guide provision of 190 spaces if they were to apply those guidelines instead they are putting in about 60. Because they've said, again, they're justifying well, that by a, yeah. saying the temple and meeting house services will not op operate at the same time. Mm. The temple will operate on weekdays and Saturdays, time. the meeting house will operate on a Sunday only. But again, they're now mm. saying they have, they've mm. dropped the wording from before where they said meeting house services or Sunday services. They now just said the meeting house will operate mm. on a Sunday only. As such, it was appropriate to limit the standard being applied to the temple as the larger building. And so as a result, they've put in not enough spaces um they've well, brought it down but that i mean the immediate yeah the immediate problem here is as soon as you have an event during the week which they've listed like youth yeah. meetings during the week and if you've got a temple session on at the same time mm -hmm. that that's not going to be enough parking spaces absolutely not presumably. so they had about 70 um, they've brought it down to about 62 so, they've got one yeah. less disabled space now so what they had before yeah. for a meeting house and a no. church office, they've reduced and they're expecting that to service a temple, an accommodation centre and the meeting house. That's not going to work. <laughs> Unless all our predictions about massively falling membership are true. And it's basically well, going to be empty soon anyway. <laughs> that brings us to this slide, Peter, but, uh, where they've yeah. given the, um, yeah. the schedule. And they've said it's worth highlighting that the above table illustrates theoretical capacities. At no point will the temple be at maximum capacity. Very rarely, if ever, will all <laughs> sessions operate at the same time and at full capacity. So at least they're being realistic about that. that That's not what they were saying um, when they decommissioned uh, Litchfield Stake next door. Mm -hmm. um, and, and told everyone to get a temple recommend yeah, because this that. temple is going <laughs> to bring everything back <laughs> yes so like i mean they've said as mm. you know they've said the quiet part out loud haven't they that the, the the attendance at our temples is falling rapidly the attendance mm. at our churches is falling rapidly they've just had to close a stake in that place mm -hmm. so they're basically ad admitting that th this is a dying church it's they'll mm. never have that temple functioning at full capacity I mean, Ruth um, just put it which is a tacit admission that the temple will be yeah. empty yeah carry on sorry because i mean are, are you are you conscious of what the actual okay so we have a really big temple in um lingfield which is called the london yeah. temple and it's no earlier london we have the preston temple uh -huh. also very big yeah. um they, you know, the Rome temple got built and presumably that's only open a couple of days a month mm -hmm. or something because there's hardly any actual church members in, in Italy. Um, and they're dotting Europe now with temples in countries with less than 2,000 active members. Mm -hmm. So to, at the moment, do we, you know, one of our initial thoughts when they announced this temple was, well, we don't have the capacity to support a third temple because we're not even using the other two mm -hmm. at capacity. Um, yeah. Obviously, it'd be a bit nearer drive for some people, but um, it raises so many questions. All of this, doesn't it? Um, but not for the people. So, on the matter. one hand, no, and for the one hand, this planning, this could really scupper it. You know, if anyone puts two and two together about the fact that they've got, is it going to be three buildings on the site? So you'll have a temple, yeah. you'll have an a chapel, you'll have an accommodation centre. Mm -hmm. You'll have some offices for the, the general staff at the temple. So they will need parking spaces ongoing, just the people who will work there every day. Um, I mean, how many people you've worked in, the, you served in the temple, mm -hmm. how many people are they going to need to just keep the temple open and run a session? 
just as staff, <sighs> never mind patrons. Um, oh, hang on, they've actually said it in the schedule, so I can work out what they're saying they'll need. Have they? Um, mm. Yeah, so they're talking about capacity in terms of number of people, etc. They talk about office, so administration and staff. Um, they're thinking it'll be 10. Right, so you've got 10 people. Oh, no, sorry, that's in that you presume... building. Sorry, so um, mm. three to room six. Yeah, three people. I know it's room. one of these dinky yeah. temples, I suppose. It'll be very small. But... So I've, you've got a staff of under 20, I reckon, to, to get it running. Yeah. Yeah. But so what would be what would be the minimum staff? Just just general ballpark figure. Yeah, How many I, I, people would they need in the session. building, not as patrons? Yeah. One, two, you, you need you need people receiving on the veil. You need people presenting at the veils. Call that six. You need an officiator mm. and an assistant. Call that two. So eight. Mm. You need a name issue person. Call that nine. Yeah, ten people. And it's someone at the recommend desk. Mm. That is like you can get yeah. by with ten to run a session. But and that's... these days they they often call people in to and train them up to just do one session a week or something so yeah they but yeah okay so if you've got 50 par how many is it 60 parking spaces yeah you've already knocked off 10 mm -hmm. so that's just for the staff of keeping the temple open during the session mm -hmm. so you now got 50 parking spaces what if you then have a youth event or 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 mm -hmm. some a, a youth dance or something like that going on because yeah. so the temple will be open on Saturdays, will it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have any, so if you have a social, event, a social on event on the Saturday, on a Saturday, okay, I would yeah. imagine. I, I don't think they'd um, be able to. They'd go somewhere else, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so if you on. and also like, pe well, people need to. the The point is these these temple districts cover long, long, large areas. This will mm -hmm. this people will be traveling hundreds of miles it. here. Yeah. So. That will be if you're going there. You're going in a car or a coach. Have they got coach parking? No. Um. So. Yeah, you, you know the the way people they're not going there on public transport. So, the if you're doing anything like a reasonably sized session, or you've got a stake bringing a having a day, mm -hmm. uh, which is what happens at the temples, um, or a stake temple evening. Mm -hmm. You're going to fill that car park and more really fast. Yeah, so I think this weddings. is the the massive... Yeah, yes, exactly. So this is the massive Achilles heel with this planning application yeah. is it's totally underplaying the parking. Mm -hmm. And if the locals get wind of that, it could, you know, really decimate the, the plan. They need but to buy the it, hotel next door. Isn't it, isn't it interesting though, Peter, right? <laughs> let's Let's get to this yeah. because... They said earlier, we yeah. don't anticipate it will run at full capacity. We don't anticipate any of that sort mm. of stuff. Um, but then what they say in their conclusions, Faithless. they say the UK is home mm. to an estimated 187,000 members of the church in more than 315 congregations. <laughs> so you do the maths there. That's 500 per congregation. Um, so don't bring that stat up and act as though it's true, because then what that means is we're going to start looking at what wards are there in the local area. Mm. Are there 500 yeah. people in each ward? Does that then mean that this temple is going to be massively oversubscribed? Because apparently there's 500 people <laughs> yeah. a ward to go around that all want to go to the temple. It's 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 nonsense. Then they yeah. say that the church announced plans yeah. for a temple to be built in the Midlands, geographically equidistant between their two existing London and Preston temples. That is mm. correct, yes. Um, and... They've said that there are currently only two existing temples, which means many members have to travel significant distances to have essential spiritual experiences. They do. And the way to rectify those vast distances that people have to travel is not to put it between the two that already exist. That's, that's not the solution, because anyone that lives within this temple catchment is within two hours of the other two temples. You've got the Scots who are yeah. multiple hours away from a temple. You've got the people in the southwest of England who are multiple mm. hours away from a temple. People in Wales who are multiple yeah. hours away from a temple. In order of places it should have gone, mm. really, in order to reduce journeys, if that's the justification they're giving to the planning that we mm. need this temple because it's going to reduce journeys, it's Ireland, which just won't happen, but that's yeah. those people have to cross the sea. Then it's Scotland, because they yeah. have to travel for several hours. <laughs> then it's yeah. Bristol or somewhere like that to service Wales and the southwest. To the west, yeah. Then it's Birmingham, maybe. Yeah. Right? 
because it doesn't it, matter. It, it, I mean, they must have. Thank you, Tom Trails. Well, we know they've. Your, uh, oh. Donation. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Come on, Peter. We know that they've get totally abandoned under Nelson any concept of actually having enough members in an area to support a temple, like meeting a threshold before you build it. Um, they're just kind of filling gaps geographically. But if they did look at it, maybe they just there's more Mormon population density in the Midlands than than the little scattered wards across the southwest. I don't know. Well, maybe no, they just closed the state. Um, yeah. There's so is it another blue. case of yeah, the apostle Jeffrey Holland wanted it where he used to work? You know that kind of thinking Very where possibly. it's yeah, he these arbitrary things. So he's from decided that, far away. Yeah. Uh, so we've got two MA, issues here, really. Not. Carry on. Yeah. Well, if, right. So <clears throat> if you divide all the membership of 180,000 in the UK between three temples, Birmingham should be servicing 60,000 people. Yeah. If they're all active as claimed. So you've literally got 1,000 members for each parking space. Well, <laughs> 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 literally, <laughs> they're a probably going to be fighting for it. <laughs> <laughs> they have yeah, to bring no, a booking be, system. Be like Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if someone if someone dropped that that if someone dropped that in the local newspaper, there'd be hell to pay. My gosh. I mean it won't yeah. be that many, but it'd be a, well, it could be know, a lot fairly we regularly. Know from the charity commission, they've said that the UK has essentially 25,000 mm. active members, which tracks with yeah. the leaked data we had a few years ago and what we know what's happened to that since. So that's an actually yeah. an average of about 80 yeah. per ward far more yeah reasonable yeah um yeah but i would i would love but if even then we push back on this yeah. we got to find out just how many active well i, I would yeah. love the church to have to justify how many members are eligible to attend this temple mm. from its catchment area yeah. of six stakes how many temple mm. recommend holding members are there in those six stakes that's something we need to know so we know mm. what the actual demand mm. for this building is going to be because in the same document, mm. they said the church has 187,000 members and aren't we so massive, which means we need a temple. And they've also said this yeah. temple's not going to run at capacity. And so, you only need 60 parking places. Yeah, and we only need 60 yeah, parking there's, well. So it's it's really riddled with contradictions. And, and in yeah. a way that it's like when we read the um, charity commission reports each year from the church, you just, you know, there's sort of a, a TBM brain at work. And they they're not shifting gear enough to keep it real, so they have to get some of the boastful propaganda in that's mm. massively overclaiming on numbers in places or or in impacts. And and this could really, I mean, seriously, this could come and bite them in the bum if mm-hmm. if the parking gets focused on by the planners. Yeah, um, well, I just want to show people what yeah, area it's but, in. But, yeah, if that's all right. Here we are. So are happy to move on to that. Sutton yeah. Coalfield. Yeah, which cool. is like a suburb of of Birmingham. Birmingham, yeah. <laughs> if, if so, that's all houses around there. Can you see people in the chat? Can you see my mouse on the screen like that? Can you see it? Um, because I'm going to start pointing it. to stuff, and I want to make sure that you can you can see it. But <laughs> that all this stuff around here up, up on the top left is all housing. On the other side of this B road here, Penn's Lane, it that's all housing as well. There's a hotel over over on the right hand side, the Ramada by Wyndham. Um, oh, you can't see my mouse. That's really quite frustrating. Um, Have you got the satellite picture? I, that I kind of do. gives more of a sense of the place. Uh, I do not have the satellite picture, actually, unfortunately. Okay. I know you took one, but I... I, I send him this cleaner. stuff, viewers, I know. and he's just the ingratitude. <laughs> it's because it's but... Nemo's a minimalist. He's living oh, this yes, minimalist lifestyle, yeah. for real. So I don't want he's too telling many us layers all about cluttering it. up my... No, um, my no Google trees. Maps, obviously, no trees. <laughs> uh, so, but you see how, there how it says Birmingham England Temple, temporarily mm. closed. They've got the gall to have registered it on Google Maps already. They don't even have planning permission. They've already announced its closure. <laughs> <laughs> I just cracked up when I saw that. It's like, yeah, okay, but what, do they own Google or something? Then it's like, yeah, of course they do. The church well, has spent you... well over a billion dollars of tithing money on actual Google. Yeah. They can put a they can put a temple anywhere on the Google Maps they like. They have paid for it because, as you learn in the temple, you can buy anything in this world with money. Indeed, so these are still Moroni's though. They haven't managed so to there it is. cross pins yet. 
no. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's, so this is the site so as it currently who... exists. So um, um, up on the top there, mm. you've got east west um, site section. So mm. um, what you can see there, that's the view from the road on the top, essentially. So currently, as you come along the road, you'll see the mission office in the back. That's the building in the middle. I don't know why I'm pointing like this. Mm. It really doesn't help anyone, but it helps me. Uh, <laughs> and then on the right of the screen, you see there, that's the current meeting house. Uh, and then on the left hand side of that site plan, just past that little red dot, um, that is a set of flats currently. So that's residential buildings there. Yeah. Then on the bottom, you've got the view of it from the side. Um, so the right hand side is the north, the left hand side is the road. So you can see some of that tree cover on the road. And then you can see mm. the current mission office building. It's going to get replaced by the temple. And then people's houses on the right, just faintly there. Um, you can see the people's houses, uh, which will become interesting. We'll back and forth between these two. So that's what they used to have. This is what the neighbors are now going to have. So from the frontage, you're going to see much more. You see the temple from the road. But the bottom picture is where it really changes. If you if you look, we'll go back and forth yeah. like this. All of a sudden, you've gone from... Mm. Imagine you live in that house on the bottom right. All of a sudden, bam. There's a big residential building in the way. They've put some boundary trees in. And there's a massive spire. It's not 300 foot, but it's still 120 foot tall. There's that spire. Uh, and that's north-south. So... Those people have what is desirably known in the UK, at least, as a south-facing garden, don't they, Peter? Mm. South-facing gardens are very important, right? Yeah. Their rhododendrons... South-facing is essential. Their mm. rhododendrons now may have a shadow from the spire of that temple on them. <laughs> yeah. um, and we'll, we'll get into this. But what do you think of that, Peter? Just the, the difference between what's on the site... Well, it, and... it's... Yeah. And again, I mean, it's... I, I, I really like the design, but... Um... Mm -hmm. But again, it's going to be how, you know, there's a lot of people that's their, their home and mm. they could have some serious objections to that suddenly appearing when they look out the back window. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a massive imposition. Uh, so I think, um, you know, to, the lo local residents have a lot of power when it comes to planning permission and they can really swing it with with um, planners. Mm -hmm. Um you know, it's not like Utah where the church can deploy lawyers and everything and bully people into cooperation. We're very sensitive. I think something Americans might not sort of get is our island is extremely densely populated where we have villages and towns. Um, your your home is very small. The People are very conscious about being overlooked, um, particularly and and views being interfered with and they can get really feisty with responses to planning applications yes. um so i think that you know just the size of it plonked in a, a residential neighborhood where it is that tight you know it's not a huge plot of land like huge again often get in america i know the church has put um buildings on quite small plots as well um but there's just a different culture here about preservation, about conservation, about uh, preserving views um, that, you know, will be a whole different ball game to what American planners would normally be used to, I expect. And I just want to point out um, who the neighbours mm. are that will probably complain. So um, up in the middle there, yeah. you can see Stag Walk. That's the buildings that will back onto the temple site. But it's these two roads at the bottom mm. here um shrubbery close mm -hmm. uh shrubbery close and the other one i can't quite read it uh, but those two ones that are running down towards the bottom of the screen those are where people will go and park their cars when they can't park mm -hmm. at the temple and those neighbors are going to get really mm -hmm. annoyed really quickly if that were to be the case so this is this is mm -hmm. again just bringing back that parking problem it definitely needs addressing um how boring are we, Peter? I've just realised someone's like, "No, oh, we're talking Nemo about his, parking." Nemo in his channel, he's not. <laughs> he's not criticising. Let's the bring this theology. church. We're going to change the church. We're going to change the world, Nemo. Planning permission. <laughs> it's just interesting. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Two hundred people are watching currently, so clearly it's not. It's not that boring. Um, but you well, can see the, there at the top. Wyoming got interesting. Picture, yeah, well, yeah, Cody. exactly. We we could be looking yeah. at another repeat of Cody Wyoming, um, potentially, yeah. which I hope not for everyone involved. Uh, but this picture here, yeah. we can see <laughs> the parking spaces, and it just doesn't look like enough. Mm -hmm. Even just we've they done need the to numbers. buy the land next to it. 
Yeah, they need yeah. to buy a bit more land. But um, the problem is, which like they said, could there's afford. mature they... trees there. <laughs> On that on that boundary <laughs> side, yeah. Um, oh yes, side, yeah. Of course, houses, mature trees and then mm. a golf course, um, mm. and there yeah. is a public footpath that runs along there. And another thing, some of these footpaths that, that are in the UK are very very old. People have been walking along these yeah. routes for almost a thousand years sometimes, and so mm. trying to obstruct. There, there are cases online mm. where people will say a public footpath runs through my garden or runs down my driveway and people can just walk down my mm. driveway. They can just walk along my house. Yeah. Because these footpaths have been yeah. there for a very long time. So to even begin to try and obstruct or or get in the way of mm. public access along that, um, yeah. that's, yeah, so that would be problematic. So I can't see I th- how they'd get any more land. No. Um, so let's think about so what the what the challenge is for planning permission in Britain before presumptuously putting your temple on a Google map. Yes. You've got the neighbours and and ob- pl- objections there. You've got local councils with their mm-hmm. rules and what could be built somewhere and changing views and things. Yeah. Um, you've got the trees preservation orders. We bats. our school just got um some new building. Oh my bats. gosh! If they bats. you know, <laughs> all you need to find is a newt, a water vole, or a bat on that yep. site, and the whole thing is scuppered. Yeah. Um. So there are lots of you know. You wonder if people are trying to stop something being built. The mm. the the nifty things they could do is quickly <laughs> dig a pond and put some newts in it. <laughs> well, Release some find bats. a water vole somewhere and just put it in a bush. <laughs> yeah. And drop, you know, drop some bat poo. <laughs> I'll never do anything. Honestly, it'd be a disaster. There is if you if if you go. Um, if you go onto the website which i think is in the description if not it will be at the end of this episode in the description there's a link to the planning permission website so you can look at all 50 documents or whatever they submitted and one of them is Mm. a bat survey so basically someone has to stand there at Mm. dusk and dawn and watch Mm. for bats in trees and check if there's any appearing because so so for example my brother the hedge they roost in trees they could be yeah. yeah, my brother. The hedges around my brother's house. He got told he had to trim them back. Right, mm. the council wrote him a really yeah. snotty letter. You need to trim your hedges back. They're encroaching on the the walkway. All yeah. that sort of stuff. But if there are bats yeah. in your hedges, please do not trim them. In big letters, it's like do not disturb <laughs> the bats. So all you yeah. have to do if you want to get away with not cutting your tree or cutting your hedge or whatever is just send the council letter back. Seeing a bat, <laughs> and you just don't have to do yeah, anything. That's it. Um, yeah. Someone just said, oh, uh, Sir, in, um, in the chat just said, sometimes endangered species just appear overnight. Uh, indeed. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so we found a, a, an oryx. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> There's a walrus in there. <laughs> just empty um, a zoo. <laughs> but this is, yeah, so this is the new oh, site. Dear. So um, we're <laughs> going to go now through it building by building, just in case you weren't here for enough. Mm. But that's a slightly easier to view image. <laughs> So you can see there the houses yeah. that surround it and all the trees that surround it. Mm. Um, and it just does not look like a big enough site. Um, mm. So here's the temple yeah. itself. Very small. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Um, I found this really amusing, Peter. I don't know about you, what they called some of the rooms on the plan to kind of... Yeah. Um, Take norm- me on a guided tour, it. Nemo. Yeah. Okay, so you'll come yeah. in from the top. That's going to be the reception. So you'll come in off that diamond shaped little uh area outside uh, which will all be immaculately kept the gardening and groundskeeping at temples mm. is second to none it's always mm. very good um so you'll yeah. come down into the entry that big thing there looks like a recommend desk that will block anyone from coming in that shouldn't uh then you'll be sent round one way for the youth they'll be sent round to the baptistry so down and round to the left mm. and that'll be male and female changing the baptistry is going to be in the center um Adult patrons who are going in to do endowments will go to the right and they'll go into the changing. Then you have what's called pre, uh, pre-instruction. pre So those are um, initiatory spaces. The chapel. Yeah. So okay, that's yeah. initiatory for, for people to have washings and anointings mm. done. Um, then there's a waiting space mm. ready to go into, um, into the instruction room, uh, which is the endowment room. Then notice how there's a, a pass-through area. That's the back of the veil, essentially. So there's places for workers to come in through there and wait 
and then there's a storage cupboard on the other side um but that's where they can receive and take people through the veil into what is called the contemplation room <laughs> which is the celestial room oh uh, and then the other side mm. of the celestial room on the left of the image, you'll see marriage, which is um, temple marriage, obviously. Uh, but that is also a room that looks like it could almost multi-purpose as an endowment room if you wanted it to. And then there's just some more waiting mm. areas. So it's really mm. not a big temple. Um, no. Not at all. There's a laundry area. There's clothing rental, admin, the president's mm. office um, up on the kind of top left. Mm. But really not a lot to it. Uh, not a lot no. to it at all. Someone said something very nice. Uh, they were at Mantai Temple Tour mm. this weekend, and I give a better tour than any usher at the Oh, I'm so jealous. Today, apparently. Um, I'm very jealous. Are yeah. the murals good, Tom? Let us know in the chat um, if the, oh, the murals are good. I would love to see the ty Minerva Taikart murals at Mantai. I'm so really jealous. So what do you think of the, of the <laughs> building, Peter? What do you think of the layout? Well, I think, I mean, this is the, I think it's quite clever. I think it's a very good design, and it's, 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 it's kind of weird for us looking at kind of a square design you know that's a bit odd isn't it we're not used to that in our our church architecture usually or our temples um so it's one of the new mac temples but um you know good use of space i think we we in the 80s and 90s we people kept talking about how stake centers could be used as temples you know if they needed to be in the adaptation and in a sense this is kind of what they're doing they're starting to put dinky temples in the car parks of an existing stake center or something um obviously this would be much nicer than using a stake center yes um so yeah so it's designed to to be smallish amounts of people at a time it's um you know with <clears throat> with a minimal staff who all still need more parking than that <laughs> mm -hmm. um so it's you know it's a great design i think they're cramming a lot in into the space yet making it look nice and and some space between the buildings um so you know i hope it becomes a happy thriving hub for for church members as the temple does mm. um but <clears throat> the idea that it's on this tiny little patch in the residential neighborhoods with houses all around mm. is I think it's going to be really problematic. And I mean, I got really nerdy about yeah. various yeah. parts of it. Um, I looked at, they've got a lighting mm. report. So they talk about what type of lighting mm. they're going to use and whatnot. So at the moment, yeah, they're planning to use quite cool lights on the railings, which are lights underneath the sort of handrail that light down onto the steps, which yeah. is quite cool, kind of integrated. Um, mm. They've said yeah. that they... Um, they <laughs> They've said that they um, will not be lighting the temple after like ten thirty at night. The spire will be okay. shut down because obviously it's a residential area. Yeah. Um. So they've considered yeah. that. They've taken great efforts to um, mm. minimize light pollution. Um. And mm. they've talked about how lighting will be adjusted as the building is there, so to make sure that it, there isn't anything that that spills over to anyone else. So I, I think mm. they're going to try their best to be good neighbors um well they'll have to or they'll be shut down <laughs> well, exactly yeah yeah i think i, I think you the church tried to it's throw not putting a monstrous Cody, car but... bunker with lighting into a desert no. yeah yeah um yeah this... so yeah that go on go on i was gonna say there's there's space well i just for... think there's no spaces for second anointing sorry the timing's off a little bit um, <laughs> but people are asking if there's any spa second spaces for the second anointing i can't see any um, yeah. There's a little pass-through area um, just off the marriage area, but that could be it. Um, there's a little area labeled mm. storage that could be it. There's no dedicated bridal dressing area that I can see. Mm. Um, mm. It's a little bit of a shame. Yeah, but uh, well, you know, I don't you, think you... does does the London Temple have one of those? Has a bridal room, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I've never been a bride, so I don't know. Um, that's a bit sexist. They don't have a boy one. But hey. Uh, <laughs> On my wedding I just day, I got the, changed the... In, a, in a school locker, essentially. Like a school <laughs> Yeah, <Google>. exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but we at least we got to the proper wedding as well. Um, that's true. Okay. So I think, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're doing... You know, as far as the buildings goes, it's it's good use of space. It's it's will hopefully be have a good flow and be nice and functional. Mm. Um, but I just think it, it's it, it's kind of 
ironic, sad, funny that they're saying it's never going to be used to capacity because all the hype around this already has been this is a great new beginning. You know, the things the area authorities were saying when they closed the Litchfield stake and we're presenting this as a step towards growth <laughs> and and talking about the temple and um, getting everyone excited about that. The hype will be everyone get a temple recommend. Let's all go in. So I just want to sort of talk a little bit about what they think they're doing. Mm -hmm. What is it that they think these adding you know dotting the gaps with temples is actually going to do for an area um we're, we're obviously quite skeptical and and you know i've heard from insiders that president nelson has literally said we want to build a thousand temples mm -hmm. that's how nuts he is and the well, leadership Kevin, Kevin do Pearson seem to be as well in that yeah. fireside he said yeah. we could get to a thousand temples but we're gonna need a lot of money yeah so it's clearly an idea yeah. that's percolating well they've got the money the the yeah church office they've got um <clears throat> when you have vast wealth but a rapidly collapsing active membership all you can do to maintain the illusion of growth is buy stuff because yeah. they can buy anything they mm. could buy, can't buy i mean people. honestly though all, all no all the all the grumpy neighbors need to do is clock that the church has three has more money than the gross national product of most of the nation states of the earth and just say well bung us each a million and we'll let you have it and that would be a bargain, and the church could totally afford that in a blink. It, it, it um, will buy, you know, buy off the neighbours. Is broke, right? So they'll just buy off the city council. Absolutely, yes. Sp spam them with cash. They'll let you put anything there. Um, so that's one approach. Uh, but you just think, what what's actually going to happen here? Mm. Is they're going to alienate the neighbours because if it does function as intended, there'll be far more than sixty people turning up on the regular, and um they they've lied this is a you know if if their propaganda is what they really believe by saying this temple is never going to act function to capacity they've lied they've made a faithless statement to a government institution they've said we're actually a dying church it's never going to really be full um so isn't don't that, worry just let's honest, build then? this thing here isn't that quite <laughs> we'll be gone soon um well it's not being honest with the membership yeah i see you yeah. know this is the thing it's the it, they're lying they're lying to someone they're either lying to the to these people because they actually believe that this temple will lead to a boom in active membership and lots of converts and and in the past it was this idea of if you build it they will come you know like when we used to split stakes rather than merging them um, which the area authorities have conveniently totally forgotten. The point was you were expecting massive growth. So you needed mm. to split the stake or awards, kind of put it on a bit of stress, kind of reboot it to pioneer modes and, okay, we need more converts, let's grow um, <clears throat> to stimulate growth when, of course, it doesn't. Um, and so they, you know, they're, I've, so oh, as with anything this church does now, they're lying to to either us or they're lying to the government um and sometimes both as we saw with the sec situation um <clears throat> so <clears throat> if they if what they put in the planning is what they really believe they should be honest with the members they should say we're never expecting this temple to function to capacity because our church is dying in britain this is a last little icing on the cake before you we disappear it's a little last hurrah. It's like a consolation. It's your retirement clock. Mm. Okay, goodbye, LDS Church in Britain. Here we, you know, we're showing some faith in you. We'll be, build you a tiny temple, um, but we don't, you know, it'll only be really used for a decade or two, and then we'll have to sell it, and it'll be a drive-through cost of coffee or something at some point <laughs> in the future, um, or an IKEA. You know, well, not an IKEA. It's not big enough. Uh, but, um, you know, it would be a drive through restaurant if mm. if what they've said to the planners is real. You know, that if what they're saying to the membership is real, they've massively lied to this community. They're about to be inundated with huge mm. amounts of traffic from all over the region coming to their literal residential neighbourhood. And my question would be, why would they Coalfield. build a temple that they don't expect to mm. be used yeah. to its fullest capacity? Why would they build yeah. one if that's the case? Well, they're lying to the members, yeah. And and also, so there's there's that. They're lying to someone. 
and they're not being honest either with the members or with with the local council um they're presumably all the propaganda around it will be growth 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 this is gonna mm -hmm. they <clears throat> the church has clearly got a strategy of desperation now of rather than reforming itself so young people want to stay in it because it's lgbtq inclusive and not sexist anymore um they're instead doubling down with how can we lock our young people in through kind of brainwashing from an early age and they are really pushing in the last couple of years young people going to the temple a lot yeah, you know you workers. talk to missionaries these days and a lot of them have been ordinance workers before they've come on their missions yeah. um which was un unheard of when i was their age you know it just wasn't a thing um you kind of pioneered that and being a very young ordinance worker missionary yeah. um and and when you were at preston was it or london, uh, london. temple you're at london temple london okay yeah. Good old London. Um and and did you live in the accommodation there? I lived <clears> in the manor house, yeah. Oh really? Oh cool. So, yeah, the, That's the nice. Old manor house on um the to the manor born. Um so so there's that. Um yeah. but then the other th the other thing for me is what's this actually going to do to stability or or growth? Mm -hmm. So they want young people to go and do baptisms. Well, we haven't got any young people left. There's only a few of them you know it's 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 a bit late if they are you know when it said it will take three years to build my brain's going you'll have to have closed another stake there by then in three years because guys you know to to it's it too late people are you know, i know will already have ordinance work assignments <clears throat> at preston and london mm. and they're already struggling to stay open yeah. they're basically propped up by american missionaries coming yeah. over and doing senior couple missions yeah so when Birmingham yeah. eventually drags away ordinance <laughs> workers from those temples, who, yeah, who's gonna run any of them? Well, and this think... is why I think it's appropriate that it looks like a mausoleum because it's gonna wipe out the local membership. They've already had to merge two stakes there or three or whatever to have enough people to be able to fill state callings without having three other callings in their ward mm -hmm. as well. That was the point. But now they're going to want pretty much all of those people to train up as ordinance workers. They will need them all. They'll need to be commutable. So it'll be the local Birmingham area people primarily leaned on to do that because they haven't got the accommodation there to bring loads of people from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, if they did, they're parking their cars there the whole time they're visiting. Well, yeah, because they're the going to be older. So part of the planning is like, mm. oh, we want them to utilize the cycling infrastructure. And there is a bus stop right outside the temple. There is a bus stop right there. Mm. Um, but mm. old where? people don't tend to cycle. And the bus connection only goes into the yeah. city. So you'd have to get a train into the city and then a bus out. And it's quite far out. Yeah. So it would be quite mm. the trek. It would be similar to getting the train to Lingfield yeah. and then trying to get from Lingfield to the London Temple. It's not easy. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, so there's not people at all. in the chat saying taxi. that you know yeah. the Midlands is easier to get to rather than Chorley and Surrey. It really just depends where you are. Um, if you're on the right mm. side of the M25, Surrey is is fine. If you're on the other side of the M25, then yeah, you might be looking at Birmingham rather than going to Preston. But mm. yeah, it it just doesn't. I really mean, make my sense to, to me. yeah. If you're going to resurrect these dying wards, they have to hang on to their youth. Um, it's probably too late. They've lost most of them. You have to have amazing ministering going on, really good leaders focused on running the youth programs, um, which they've already put on bishoprics, which is, you know, they're not always the best at. <clears throat> um, you're going to need to have massive support for the missionary efforts going on. But this temple will be like opening a black hole. It will suck in all the energy and the light. Mm -hmm. It's going to all the all the people they need out on the streets and in people's homes and proselyting and and f intensively fellowshipping converts that the missionaries find, they are not going to be available because they're going to have to be going to the temple loads of times a, a week, and that will suck up all of their available time if they're employed. Um, Which is exactly antithetical increasingly... to what Hans Bohm said yeah. about um, yeah. people getting out into Reducing their neighbourhoods and yeah. not feeling over and, and having uh, inundated. secular social life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He said, you know, you to meet new people to church. join. 
So how are people going to yeah. find members out, like friends outside the church when they're going to the temple no. all the time, doing busy no. work for dead people? And and this is already overwhelming the support network from Utah because mm. it, you you've we know now that the area presidency in Utah are heavily leaning on elderly people there to serve two missions or three missions because they don't have the manpower locally and woman power to run temples to run the support systems that they want to in the wards and our own local population is evaporating before our eyes so my my conclusion is this temple will be seen as a curse it'll be seen as a disaster for for the church in the area and they should already see it as such if they had any common sense and if they're actually paying attention to the demographic data which they have they won't share it with us but they've got it we guess at it or sometimes get a leak they, this is the last thing that the church in Birmingham needs is a temple because they will divert a huge percentage of the, the little remaining manpower and energy to servicing literally dead people. They will ignore the living and service the dead and then their wards will become full of just elderly people who are dying. Mm. So you'll, their wards will be hospices and then be closed the temple will be a hospice, putting all the remaining energy into looking after dead people who aren't even here now, and then the temple will close. Mm. And that's it. Game over for the church in the United Kingdom after yeah. all this effort for two centuries. Um, that's what's going to happen. It's not fun. And if they can't see that, they deserve that to happen to them because it's so freaking obvious. <laughs> you know, if they actually pay attention to reality, there's so much stupid magical thinking that goes on or cynical. I think, you know, when you see, I think honestly, there's something dead inside when I look now at area authorities and and area presidencies, because they there's just a sort of resigned sadness and hopelessness. They'll say the words of enthusiasm and growth. But you can tell their heart isn't, really isn't in it, and they they've they've been here in the church in Europe for long enough, in the, you know as locals to know this is not what's happening. All those the same things they say to us they've heard for decades, mm. during which the church collapsed, and they're but totally the, unrealistic about what it will actually take to make this church boom and to fill that temple. But the amazing thing is, Peter, is that they don't ever they don't ever utilize mm. the decline to try and G up the membership into doing something about it. I know we said earlier, you know, mm. you can't buy people, but the church is pouring thousands of pounds into converts. Did, didn't we work out that yes. based on yeah. the number of converts there were in the UK oh. last year and how much the church yeah. said it spent on the missionary work in the church last year, it's £10,000 a convert it yeah. costs. Yeah. So something yes. like 15 And 80% of those dollars. are... Uh, yeah, and 80% and of them will leave within two years. Yeah. So it's a huge, you know, the actual cost of a one lasting convert who stays more than that is tens of thousands of pounds. So they, if they just give each of those um, people five grand, they'd be quids in and they'd have a load of members. I know. Yeah, just a five grand joining fee. Which is... It'd be, it'd be golden. The church is <laughs> it'd be money. booming. Oh, no, no, but I think, I think we should wrap, wrap this up. That's how mad it um, is. I just want to have yes. a quick look at a couple of bits because this is we need to get back to the nerdiness. We're talking too meta now about the decline yeah. of the church. We're, we're here <laughs> for the the planning of the Birmingham Temple, <laughs> um, the plans. <laughs> but this this again does speak to the decline of the ward. They've taken the Relief Society yeah. area and classrooms and gone. You know what? Don't need those anymore in this ward. So they've turned it now into the uh, workshop area, technical support, etc. They're going to put a distribution centre in what used to be the Relief Society room up at the top of that right hand picture mm. and then they're cutting their chapel overflow in half and yeah. turning the rear half yeah. into a relief society room because they don't mm. need this oh it's as simple as they don't need that overflow space anymore they don't need yeah. that part of the the building to be that big mm. anymore um and then here is the this multi-purpose is... building which is where you know mm. the youth will come there's four apartments for people to stay and then there's the temple presidency accommodation opposite um and then there's some, you know, sort of multi-use dining areas and, and whatnot there in that building. So the multi-purpose building um, was going to be taller, was going to be bigger, and it's been brought down mm. now, again, because of planning concerns. Uh, 
so what you see in the plane documents again if you go check them out there's emails that were sent and there was meetings that were had before the plane permission was even submitted so um that the church could find out what any sort of major objections would be straight off the bat so they wanted the temple to be further south on the plot originally and they made them move it up so it was in line with the buildings either side of it stuff like that like mm. they they're really having to try and play the game to get this um to happen and um yeah. speaking of playing the game uh if you all enjoy what we've done here and you enjoy us playing this game of looking into things and trying to work out what the church is going to do you can support the work with the donor box link in the description five ten fifteen dollars a month uh it's really appreciated thank you to everyone who is donating currently um it's very helpful it's been really fun to be able to do this full time particularly as i'm preparing for general conference mm -hmm. which peter will be joining me for my prediction show hey. and for a couple of the sessions in two weeks time um so click the subscribe button if you uh, want to find out when that's going to be, uh, because I'm very excited to cover conference. I've got some good predictions in the pipeline. Um, and next week's video will be a sort of more standard video before we then move into a weekend full of live streams uh, all about general conference. But Peter, just before we go, uh, what are your final hmm. thoughts on this temple? Well, I just want to say thank you for all the comments. People have been really busy mm -hmm. in the comments. Yes, Lots of interesting thoughts about the actual, ex you know, the, that that it I is problematic have having a temple this small. <laughs> People are asking about my candles. I have it them. does. It literally smells of Nemo. Um, <laughs> and, you know, they're saying, well, what if someone's having a barbecue in their back garden or a party? You know, can you imagine? It's, it's all a bit too... You know, you can't control that environment with people's homes around. Someone might be having a rave. Yes. Yeah, you know, <laughs> um, that's good. The peace so, and tranquility of the temple. Well, the neighbours uh, might have drum and bass going yeah. in his back garden. Yeah. You know, you, and you, there's a road. You sitting in the endowment <laughs> yes. and you could just hear... <laughs> tss, 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 coming from yeah, someone's yeah. back garden. It would be terrible. However, anyway. I yes. actually like that because I think temples should be where the people are and part of normal life. One of the most beautiful, profound spiritual experiences I've had with a temple was I, I was on a school trip to New York and uh, I nipped out of the hotel at night because we were within walking distance of the Manhattan Temple. And it was it was really special. I couldn't go in, but I just stood on the pavement in front of it. And they had in the in New York, they kind of put logos in the street. So on the pavement, they had this wonderful sort of ironwork, um, Deseret Beehive and things. And it was... And I was looking at the CNN building and Central Park was behind me and there were taxis screaming by. And it was literally in the heart of one of the biggest cities on earth. And I thought that is beautiful because we're so used to this idea that temples have to be um, countryside, that they have to be detached from the world with all these manicured yes. gardens. Yeah. You know, and I really believe in an urban church that, that, you know, we need to be speaking to people in the cities and relevant and present with them. So I'm all of that I'm fine with. You know, we need to get over our preciousness. Um, but it's not going to be what people are expecting in that sense. Yeah. But I just think the big the main message here is we have got documentary evidence that the church is lying. It's either lying to these people by saying we can have hardly anyone turn up and we don't need many parking spaces. They're lying to the Birmingham Council. Mm -hmm. Or more, more in a sense, more importantly for us all, they are Probably telling massive lies to the membership. Yes, <laughs> they are telling lie to the huge council. lies to you. No, any Not minute the that they stand up and say this temple is going to stimulate growth, this temple is going to lead to to success, this temple will be a great hub for our community. Mm -hmm. They've already told those people they're expecting hardly anyone to turn up. And yeah. and that that contradiction needs addressing. And we need to hold these leaders accountable, to be honest, to the membership about what their projections are. And if they really believe that, if they know in their heart of hearts that the, we are a dying church and that it's it's only going to be a small number of people going to these things. Mm -hmm. And it's just a sort of, well, we'll cooperate with President Nelson, but who knows what the future will hold then can you please maybe think about saving your church? Start to have really deep, profound, proper thinking about what would actually mean that our church does boom. What would it take to actually keep our young people? You've had years to indoctrinate them and they're still leaving. 
that's a massive fail. So start to ask the big questions. And if if those area authorities standing there trying to motivate people to some kind of success and joy and, mm-hmm. and growth are serious, they need to be getting on the front line to campaign for women's ordination. They need to be campaigning for, for the LGBTQ people can get married in that temple. They need to be fighting that for those things because those are the only chance they've got of holding on to young people in the 21st century and their older people as well and the parents of the daughters and the parents of the LGBTQ people. And that's where your battle is, not convincing the young to go and work as temple ordinance workers because as soon as they're in that building, you've trapped them in their own mausoleum. It's a coffin for the church because they're not doing missionary work. They're not out fellowshipping people. They're not developing a social life to convert their friends. They are trapped in a coffin. You've locked them in a mausoleum where, while their church outside in the real world dies servicing dead people. At least it's a somewhat architecturally sensitive coffin. at least least the spire on the coffin isn't 300 feet tall um but no i I agree with you peter i I think i don't think it's going to help the church grow in any meaningful way we've got someone in the chat saying it will cut uk members travel time i don't think it will by that much it will for some members Mm. in the middle of the country Mm. it's not going to for the members that have always felt somewhat isolated out on the fringes of the church yeah. who don't because they're still going the to the other ones the motorway. yeah they're still going to the ones yeah. people are still driving along the m4 all the way down to london having yeah. to go around the m25 um so on that note mm. i think we i don't think we'll stop the, interesting the church building it i'm not even particularly interested in stopping the church building it necessarily no, no, no. because you know they can do it if they want <laughs> You know, uh, but I will be keeping a close eye on you know how planning goes and meetings with members mm. and the community yeah. and whatnot, and I'll be reporting it because this channel is mm. always about giving the non Utah perspective on the church, and we have something interesting happening right now in Europe. Um, and let's just hope no bats move in in the meantime. All right, or cool. newts have droppings, good, or newts, or <laughs> anything like that. Have a good evening, anyone. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much, everyone in the chat. Your comments have all been really entertaining to us mm-hmm. too. Sorry, I haven't been able to get to them as much. But um, mm. it's been very cool to have you all. Conference is going to be excellent. I cannot stress enough that I'm going to watch all of conference so that you don't have to. I will be watching so you don't have to, but I will be here after every session. So have a great evening. Take care, and I will see you next week. Bye, everyone. <laughs>